better. So if you get really good at giving these uh, instructions to people about the sound that you want to make, you can get other people to do it too. So this is very infectious. It goes viral if you pepper it into a band. And it's the sectional that is the liver dive. That's how you do it. You go for tone, you go for relax, and you keep everybody really healthy in the section. And four weeks in is astonishing, and six weeks in it's permanently in the culture. If you do it, every rehearsal, every time we do it at Arizona State, I was number two there for six years. But every time we did it, Jim Hudson gave me nine minutes to breathe up the band and tune the band, you know, get everybody warmed up. So we'd use 10, 10 minutes to get the whole thing done. So you'll see that if there's ways of getting this breathing gym right in the middle of doing the warming up, or whatever the warm up is. You do it in wind with fingers and then you do it again, starts to marry. The moment that the wind and the music start going together, like you learn from Pat, that picture was worth a thousand words. You picked it up, you did it with it. So you want to be able to demonstrate to your section. You want to be able to talk to your section and describe sound. And you want to look and recognize what relaxed looks and feels like. And you want to feel it yourself. You want to be a model and you want to notice it in all the people that you work with. And you know what you are then? A teacher. That's an awesome feeling, helping people get better. And everybody knows that. Every human being knows if they're feeling better, they'll go along for the ride every time. This is cool. We're getting better. Let's do some of this in time. So that's the next thing after this. So we started with some nice even flows. Let's play F major scale. So let's do it through this pattern. Got it? Like that. We'll so, go like that. And we're gonna go in a, we're gonna go in a round. So we're gonna go to the ninth note of the scale, one note past the octave. On the pattern, all the way up and all the way down. And we'll go first row plus the sax. This first this first Again. Over here, and then the next middle, and then the back. We're going three parts all the way up and all the way down, going. And so we're going to do it at some intervals because that's how we play in tune, right? We don't play in tune to unison. You guys have unison F or unison B flat in the show. It would be really rare, and it probably wouldn't be the last note of a show. You're going to be playing in intervals. So to tune where the needle's straight up and down all the time is out of tune. Right? The only time A is 440 is in an A chord. That's it. It's the only time A is 440. We design instruments for a living. We guarantee that on every brass instrument, you can play every note, every B flat, at least 15 cents sharp to at least 15 cents flat. Every note has to be like that, or the instrument's not in tune. It can't be straight up and down all the time. That's the most out of tune instrument there is. It's too stiff. You can't play in tune, right? We, gotta, we have to make the right adjustments. Play flat enough in the third of the chord, sharp enough in the fifth of the chord. So interval measurement is far more important than unison measurement. A unison measurement to a machine is a great place to know where your instrument is. Then you got to play with people in intervals. So we're going to do this in two intervals with the tongue. But the idea here with the with the air is this air. I'm doing this exercise with this concept for air. Chopped up. I'm thinking one direction. I'm not, I'm not thinking. I'm thinking. He's denting it. That way. Denting the air. The air still flows, you just dent it. You don't Let's have try to this chop. Sam. It. We're going around, up to the ninth and back down. Here we go. And the, remember, one note past the octave. F and stick, and Pat will jam. So you stick with Pat. One, two, three. that really are uncomfortable with this. There's a, this is a beautiful practice point. We're at the end of the class. We got a minute that we're going to take to do this. Everybody wind pattern it. Let's do it again. That's all. That's a simple way of putting that breathing that we did today to work. Because people are worried about their tongue speed and what you should do is just blow right through and just get carried away by the rhythm. So let's do it as a wind pattern and watch me. When I go like this, try to find your hand that far away so we can project this here. Okay? One, two, everybody. Ready? Ah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Find the hand. We're feeling good. We're feeling really good. Everybody got, got it in those. So you, all you have to do is get into the quick breathing of it and flow. It should feel like the hand. So you're going to see me going like this, and then you're going to see me going like this. Just keep blowing for the hand, OK? The teams will change. We'll go one, two, no sousaphones. One, two, three, and then with Pat, four will come in, OK? So stereo sousaphones. Ready? One, two, ready? Like this. with the first sound we made on our instruments today in this room. We'll go two in, four out. Listen to what it sounds like now. Ready? It's F. It's F. It's the same thing we were doing. That's how we started this whole thing. Two. Ready? Breathe in. <laughs> Patrick and I can't thank you enough for the way you, you concentrate. It's phenomenal. And the way you hear. The band has to have great time like we worked on. It has to breathe together because that's where great ensemble comes from. And you have to, have to have a great ear to do this. Because you're going to have to hear a long way to be able to tune this band up. So while you're doing that, enjoy taking the air of uh, the people together. And when you're out on the field, do the same thing. You're, if you can hear far away, the band will become great. So while you're out on the field, you should try to pick up, you look at instruments across the field and see if you can hear them while you're doing a play. See if you can actually do that. The more you exercise your ear, the better it goes. You only go as far as your ear develops and your air. All those incredible basics, the technique, the ear, and the air. The more you invest in your section on that, the better they're going to have a foundation underneath what they do. So we've dedicated a lot of time to do one thing, which is get the foundation in people and make it fun. Make it fun to be in in balance. Make it fun to have a great foundation. So keep that and keep your people healthy when you're working with your bands. It'd be awesome. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Yep. All right. A tremendous thank you to Sam and Pat once again. Just an awesome, awesome presentation and from some phenomenal concepts, obviously, to take home and some great things to build upon uh, your overall breathing and so forth. So make sure you share those things uh, with your friends back home. Great things for your band program. Um, we're going to shift gears here a little bit. So our friends uh, watching us again, we're going to be with you here in just a moment. We're going to head on outside. And our directors, you're going to be joining us um, to see what the marching band clinic is going through. And Bob and Matt are going to go through some things in terms of basics and get ready for things tomorrow with the closing ceremonies and talk about some rehearsal techniques along the way. So um, if you've got further instructions for these guys, definitely. And uh, David, we can give any other instructions that you have for the directors, but we'll get ready to head over.